This week on Jerusalem Dateline, Israelis head to the polls in a pivotal election that will chart the future for the Jewish state. What impact will President Trump have on the results? We'll take a look. Plus, the White House invites evangelicals to discuss the upcoming Middle East peace plan. And two rare discoveries from the ancient city of David bring people from the Bible to life. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. The political fate of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hangs in the balance. On April 9th, Israeli voters go to the polls to decide between Netanyahu's Likud party and a new coalition that's determined to defeat him. John Wagi brings us that story. Depending on which poll you believe, Netanyahu's party is running a little ahead of or a little behind the new blue and white party. It's a coalition led by political newcomer Benny Gantz, former chief of the Israeli Defense Forces. In fact, the Blue and White Party is a notable collection of military and secular leaders. Many of them once served with Netanyahu, but now are his bitter political rivals. They see the pending indictment of the prime minister as an opportunity to replace him. Israel's attorney general announced his intention to indict Netanyahu just weeks before the election. Since then, Likud has risen in the polls. Knesset Speaker Yuli Edelstein is Likud's second in command. He often fields media questions about the pending indictment. You have to remind us that indictment happens in court. And uh, before that, you know, according to the very old rule, uh, everyone's innocent until proven guilty. And uh, that's the situation of the prime minister right now. Pollster Mitchell Barak says even a week before the vote, it doesn't feel like the campaign has started. You know, there's been a lot of mudslinging back and forth, but if you walk around Jerusalem or Tel Aviv or anywhere else, you don't see signs on people's balcony. You don't see signs in their window. Netanyahu has reaped the benefits of his close relationship with President Trump and the visit of Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro to Israel. Barack recently took an in-depth survey of Israelis and found their support for Trump has skyrocketed to 73%. Trump has fulfilled a dream basket of Israeli wishes, from moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, to recognizing the Golan as part of Israel, to cracking down on Iran and Palestinian terrorists. So Israelis really, to a certain extent, see that there's a Likudnik, if you will, a Likud person in the White House, and they see that Netanyahu is very, very close with President Trump. Israelis will decide April 9th whether those close U.S. ties will be enough to put Netanyahu over the top. Experts say many, if not most, voters won't even decide until the final four days. John Wagi, CBN News, Jerusalem. To talk more about this important election, CBN senior editor John Wagi and CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl join me in our studio. John, Julie, great to be with you. Talk about these uh, important elections. John, you've been covering Israeli elections since 1996. What's unique about this election? Well, I think uh, each one is different. And, you know, just four years ago in 2015, the polls looked like Bibi was headed for real trouble. The center left, mm -hmm. led by uh, Isaac Herzog, was quite a ways ahead. And, and one of them showed Likud getting 18 seats. They ended up getting 29 or 30 on election night. So it was a stunning victory for Netanyahu. This one looks more like the polls favor the right, generally speaking, but where will Likud fit in that and will Netanyahu be asked to form a government? And that's probably going to be determined by about 15% of the voters who are undecided. Mm -hmm. It's been a very low key election this year compared to others, partly because I think the cold weather, but um, also because Israelis just haven't been motivated to vote. There's a lot of complacency. Right, right. Um, and I think uh, that may change over the next uh, few days as we lead into the election. Yeah, Julie, can you explain to people, people aren't necessarily voting for a prime minister like Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, Benny Gantz, uh, but they're voting for a party. And can you explain that dynamic to people? Yeah, right. Um, so, so people, they vote for the parties. Um, and we have, I think, 47 parties running this time. Maybe 43 will actually make it to the polls. Most of them, probably most people have never heard of. Um, but the idea is that you vote for the party and then the leader of the party who gets the most seats mm -hmm. and can actually form a coalition out of the other parties 
um, he be, becomes the prime minister. So right now the battle is kind of between the right and the left more than between Netanyahu and mm -hmm. Gantz. Right. And then President Rivlin, after the elections, will decide which, which leader, which party is going to form a coalition government. Right. Um, John, what, what are the special dynamics uh, of this election? We're just a few days away from it. Well, uh, it's, it's really in a large measure all about Netanyahu. People know about the problems with his uh, potential indictment from the Attorney General, which won't happen for months more. Uh, and it looks like voters are right now maybe saying, we're going to go with Netanyahu anyway. We think that there might be too much uh, prosecutorial kind of advantage uh, that's happened in Israel, and they like they like the job he's done as mm -hmm. prime minister. I mean, you know, President Trump, Mike Pompeo's been here. He just went to Moscow to visit Putin. He, he's been on a diplomatic whirlwind, and the benefits that have come to Israel from that have been really astounding. I mean, the move of the embassy under President Trump, the recognition of the Golan Heights. These are all things that benefit Netanyahu. That uh, the closeness of his relationship with uh, with Washington and I, I don't think people want to overturn that so it'll be interesting to see if they punish Netanyahu uh, for being in office for 10 years and they're tired of him and they don't like the indictments or whether they say listen the guy's doing a good job and we're gonna we're gonna put him back in office yeah Julie would you just have about a minute left there's about 15 percent of the people still undecided what are you hearing from Israelis uh, about you know what they're gonna when they go to the polls I think you know people are a lot of people are still undecided a lot of people are like, I just don't know who to vote for. Yeah, I vote, usually vote for Netanyahu, but I don't know. So I think, though, um, like John mentioned, I don't think the indictment is really going against him so much. Mm -hmm. I think it's more fatigue of, of him having been in office for 10 years, and some people are saying, no, we need to try something new. Other people are, I, I mean, he's clearly the, the person who has the most experience, who, you know, who is the, has the leader image. Uh, Gantz, you know, he, he was an army chief, mm -hmm. but not that's not politics, as we right. heard earlier this week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he doesn't have the political experience. Well, it'll be fascinating to see how things turn out, and we'll we'll be down there in uh, Likud headquarters uh, to see the election's results. John, Julie, thanks a lot. Thanks. Less than a week before the elections, after 37 years, the body of an Israeli MIA has been returned home. Zachary Baumol, a dual U.S.-Israeli citizen, went missing during the 1982 Lebanon War. Balmo was one of three Israelis missing from the Battle of Sultan Yaqub, fought between Israel and Syria. The other two are still missing. I remember Yona, Zachary's father, well. I remember his pain when he spoke about his son, his yearnings, his longings. He traveled the entire world to track any piece of information on his missing son. Many times Yona told me in tears that he had one wish, to find Zachary before he himself passed away. And fortunately, Yona passed away a decade ago, and he didn't live to be with us in this moving moment. Born in Brooklyn, New York, Bamo had immigrated to Israel and served in the IDF. In his last communication with his family, he wrote, Don't worry, everything's okay, but it seems I will not be coming home anytime soon. Well, one of the first things a new Israeli government will have to deal with is the rollout of President Trump's peace plan. And evangelicals are joining Trump on the front lines as he crafts his plan for peace in the Middle East. While faith leaders are urging the White House to support Israel, they also call for help and prayer for the Palestinians. CBN's White House correspondent Ben Kennedy brings us this story from Washington. We were stunned by that. Stunned that the White House wanted input from leaders like Pastor Jack Graham on Middle East peace. We talked about, of course, uh, the sovereignty of Israel, that that's very important for Christians and uh, particular Bible-believing Christians. That, that Israel has a right to exist and Jerusalem as its capital. In the meeting that included Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the President's son-in-law Jared Kushner, Graham and others urged the security of Israel must be a priority. Making sure that Israel is safe, as long as people keep throwing bombs uh, at Israel, it's going to be difficult to have peace. So everybody understands that. But at the same time, we talked about partnerships with Arab countries and governments 
that could be partners and economic development I think will be a part of the plan. Another attendee, Pastor Jensen Franklin, agrees. Do you think this plan could actually stop the violence along the Gaza border? I believe there's a possibility. There is a different, there's something that, that is working and uh, people like Jared Kushner and Jason Greenplatt and others are working diligently trying to find some middle ground. The middle ground could include a two-state solution. The challenge lies with the Palestinian Authority, who has refused to speak with the White House since President Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. What needs to be in this plan to get the Palestinian Authority to the table to even talk? Uh, opportunity. Uh, everyone needs to live with hope. And so many Palestinian people are living without hope. God cares and loves the Palestinians and cares about them, and so do we in the evangelical community. But we cannot allow uh, parts of Israel that serve so greatly to protect and secure the people of Israel to be given away. Coming up, a look at one of Israel's newest political parties and what makes it so unique. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment you won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Check your local listings or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. This Easter, discover the origin of Passover in CBN's free guide, The Jewish Holidays. Take a biblical and historical journey through the major holidays Jews celebrate each year. Explore the festivals Jesus observed throughout his life. Learn why the holidays are so central to Jewish life and culture today. Grow in your faith. Get your free copy of The Jewish Holidays. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash the Jewish Holidays for your free guide. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. One of the parties running in this year's election is called the Bible Block Party. I spoke with its founder, Avi Lipkin, in our studio. Well, Avi, thanks for joining us here in Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for having me again. So you have a, a, a new party called the uh, Bible Block Party. Tell us what that is. Okay, well, firstly, the name in Hebrew is Gush HaTanachi. Now, in Hebrew, there is no word for Bible. We have the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament, and then we have the Brit Hadasha, which is the New Testament. Uh, I came to a conclusion. I've been in this country 50 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, as you know, I've been speaking in Christian churches all over the world for, for decades, for yeah. 28 years. Yeah. And as I see the demography changing in Israel, I'm seeing a growth in a Christian population in Israel, which has absolutely no representation in our Knesset. Our Knesset is our parliament sure. or our Congress. Mm -hmm. Having been born in the United States, uh, raised on the lap of the American Revolution, I'm a sincere believer in no taxation without representation. Now, these Christians who live in Israel are citizens. They pay taxes. They vote. They serve in the army. Mm -hmm. They're married to us, and they have no representation. And as also a believer in Judeo-Christian Western civilization and democracy values, I would like to bring that kind of thinking to Israel, the thinking that made America great, at least until the last few decades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Israel has a great, a, a great future, which will include many more Jews and Christians who will be coming home to Israel very soon 
as a result of uh, terrorist uh, right. jihad. Yeah. So you see this Aliyah coming back here to, uh, to Israel. And what kind of response have you had from Christians about this, uh, this new party? Well, to be honest with you, uh, a lot of Christians say, well, it's a wonderful idea, but it's very hard for us to believe that such a thing could actually happen. Mm -hmm. And that my son even said to me, Daddy, you're a prophet, uh, but you're 300 years before your time. And I said to my son, no, son, three years before my time, mm -hmm. which means tomorrow, manana. And uh, what, what we do have today is that 8% of our population is Christian or non-Jewish, according to the rabbis. Uh, eight percent is translates into eight or nine members of Knesset, and there are no Christian members of Knesset yet. Mm -hmm. The Muslims have ten members of Knesset. They represent their constituency. The Christians are a constituency, and they have no representation. Uh, I wanted to add also that there are three million Jews who have lived in Christian countries, who I think would be a potential constituency for this party because they want to bring this country into the Western civilization sphere. As you probably know, half of the uh, Knesset is towards um, uh, nationalism and socialism, secular, and half is uh, from the Islamic world. Um, there is no American Western civilization democracy, and I'm trying to bring that here. Right. We have about a minute left, Avi. Tell us the bottom line. What do you want people to take away from this new Bible block party? Well, I think the most important word is love. Sounds familiar? Uh, reconciliation between Jews and Christians. Uh, I think that uh, God has sent this fanatic terrorist threat to unite the Jews and the Christians from a common threat which is threatening our civilization all over the world, not just in Israel, but Israel is, uh, is on the front. Well, Avi, much success to you on uh, April 9th uh, at the elections. Thank you very much. And I wanted to say also that I've been in the churches 28 years. I've been campaigning two and a half months in Israel. So the election campaign actually continues into the direction of the new elections, mm -hmm. which will be maximum in four years, maybe again in three months. That's right. Well, come back and tell us about that when, uh, uh, during the next election as well. That'll be great. Thank you. Thank you. Eddie. Up next, an historic visit by evangelical leaders to the Muslim nation of Azerbaijan. A historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Now on Blu-ray or DVD, the new CBN documentary special, The Hope, The Rebirth of Israel. History is knocking on the door. Things are changing. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Israel The Hope to receive your copy of the CBN documentary special, The Hope, The Rebirth of Israel for a gift of $10 or more. Now on Blu-ray or DVD. Once he declares the state of Israel, they're all going to come after us. Go on an extraordinary journey as Gordon Robertson explores the founding of Israel and meet the heroes who made history. The United States recognizes the new state of Israel. The hope the rebirth of Israel can be yours on Blu-ray or DVD for a gift of $10 or more. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to cbn.com slash Israel the hope. Call now. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. The Shiite Muslim majority country of Azerbaijan recently invited more than a dozen evangelical pastors on an official visit to the nation. But why would the president be interested in evangelical Christians? CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl takes a look. Azerbaijan is located on the Caspian Sea, bounded on the north by Russia and the south by Iran.
But this former Soviet Republic, where Shiite and Sunni Muslims intermarry and Christians and Jews live freely, believes that tolerance is the way to go. Dialogue is very important during this time because in different parts of the world, we are witnessing lots of conflicts and wars, which makes it necessary for establishing dialogue. Government Minister Mubarez Gurbanli hosted the group of 15 evangelical leaders and a rabbi. We are part of the Muslim countries, but despite this fact, we are also home for three different religions. That's the importance of this event. Gurbanli told CBN News his country is leading this dialogue because of its history. Azerbaijan hosted many religions over the centuries, including Judaism and Christianity, before Islam arrived 800 years ago. That's why history gives us a good opportunity to bring up the ideas of tolerance and mutual understanding. It started when Azeri President Ilham Aliyev invited American rabbi Mark Schneier to bring evangelical leaders to his country. Schneier, who has been working to improve Jewish-Muslim relations for 15 years, teamed up with Robert Stearns to create a better understanding between Christians and Muslims. Going to Azerbaijan was the natural first step. There are 57 Muslim nations. Azerbaijan has led the effort in terms of presenting a more progressive, a more centrist, a more inclusive, a more welcoming Islam than is supportive of the State of Israel. I believe it's an extraordinary moment in the Kingdom of God where God is moving behind the scenes in ways that we can't imagine. The group met in Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. Their first stop was the State Cemetery and the Alley of Martyrs, where civilians massacred in a Soviet crackdown in 1990 are buried. Schneier's group was treated like royalty in this Muslim-majority country. Azeris say they're very proud of their nation. And one man told us the thing he likes best about his homeland is that they love hosting guests. The Grand Mufti of the Caucasus region told the group establishing relationships is not based on religion, but on common humanity. He later hosted the group for dinner at his palace. What really has surprised me the most is the level of communication, relationship, and it seems like genuine friendship between the various uh, major faiths that are in this country. You just don't see that. Uh, even in the United States, we seem to have a lot of intolerance right now. It's uh, one of the places that I think are really leading the way by example of what coexistence and um, cultural harmony, but also uh, religious tolerance looks like. Schneier said he believes this is a first step toward reconciliation between Muslims and evangelicals. Stearns called it an opportunity for the kingdom. This could be a moment of wonderful blessing for Azerbaijan. So I'm inviting the church, uh, the Christian church worldwide, to pray with me that this is an hour uh, for the glory of the Lord to come to this nation. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Baku, Azerbaijan. Still ahead, new discoveries from King David's capital bring people from the Bible to life. Prophecy thousands of years old. We were called to be a light to the world. Being fulfilled today. <laughs> Discover how. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. Just call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he have, which color he is, this is what I'm doing. See how the people of Israel are fulfilling prophecy. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. By sharing their knowledge. In Africa, in Asia, in South America, in East Europe. And their love. This is how we work. This is us. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. 
Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Israeli archaeologists have made two rare discoveries in the city of David, pointing to people mentioned in the Bible. I went down there to take a look and found out what makes these new finds so special. The discoveries came from here, the Givati excavation. It's part of the ancient city of David, where King David set up his capital 3,000 years ago. Israeli archaeologists made the discoveries in this structure, where they found evidence of a big fire they believe dates back to 586 B.C. when the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. Here you can still see the ash from the fire. The discoveries are an ancient bula and a seal. This is the bula. A bula is actually a tiny piece of clay that was attached to letters or jars in order to make sure that no one opened them without noticing. The bula bore a special name. And this one says, to Netan Melech, the servant of the king. Le Netan Melech, Eved HaMelech. Now, the name Netan Melech is known from the Bible, from uh, the Book of Kings. While archaeologists can't say for certain this Netan Melech is the one mentioned in the Bible, Dr. Gerbovich from Hebrew University says the evidence is compelling. First, the name Netan Melech, which is rare. Second, the period. We're talking about the mid-7th century BCE, King Josiah. And third, the fact that we have the title. So Netamelech was someone who was close to the king. For the archaeologists, the finds are like touching Jerusalem's history. This is very impressive for me, not only because of the history, because this is actually a snapshot for the history that happened here 2,600 years ago. These discoveries shed more light on ancient Jerusalem and paint a more complete picture of King David's city. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Givati Excavation, the City of David. It was an amazing experience to see up close and personal the evidence of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 586 BC. It was like touching history and one more sign of the connection of the Jewish people to their ancient capital. Well, from ancient discoveries to achievements out of this world. Technicians and supporters cheered the successful maneuver by Bereshit, Israel's Space IL spacecraft, on its way to the moon. The highly sophisticated maneuver took Bereshit out of an orbit around the Earth into a lunar orbit. Engineers compared it to the space equivalent of slamming on the brakes. This makes Israel the seventh country in the world to put a spacecraft in orbit around the moon. It also places Bereshit on track for its scheduled landing on the moon's surface April 11th. If successful, that would make Israel only the fourth country in the world to land a spacecraft on the moon. What an achievement for a country of only 8 million. Well, that's all for this edition. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.